Hey, what's going on guys, and welcome back to Monster Tamer News, the segment on this channel where we go over the past week's happenings in the world of monster taming. This week we have the first free content update for Monster Hunter Stories 2 Wings of Ruin, seven teased Shin Megami Tensei Persona related games, which seems absolutely crazy to be honest, a new SMT5 story trailer as well, and the reveal of the Steam Deck, which might be a solution for some monster taming fans that can't quite play the current games because they lack the funds to get a more expensive PC. Anyways, with all that being said, let's jump right into the segment. Alright, so first DLC for Monster Hunter Stories Wings of Ruin is now live and features the new Monsty Palamute. This Monsty can be obtained via a co-op quest. As for continued content, we're still streaming our playthroughs. It's been a pretty busy week for me to be honest, but I'm also uploading more tutorials for those just jumping into the game, which will include some beginner tips and tricks, a rite of channeling guide, and more essay style topics like the Pokemon vs. Monster Hunter Stories 2 video that came out yesterday. Also of note is that Monster Hunter Stories 2 was the fastest selling JRPG on Steam, which is nuts. Definitely deserved though. The latest Kindred Fates newsletter is live, and it has some interesting information to say the least. First of all, the AI for all the kinfolk for the practice arena are done, and the arena itself should be arriving soon. Expect a stream on this channel for when that happens. For single player, Salamurder is also getting an updated rig, and they are working on an NPC AI for various kinfolk. I'm personally really excited for the single player arena because the current state of the multiplayer is a bit lacking due to getting matched with either nobody or the same couple of people over and over again who regularly play. So even if you use the discord, you kind of get stuck fighting the same people. And I think it'll be a breath of fresh air, especially for players that don't play all the time to be able to actually fight against NPCs and experiment and stuff like that. Now, not specifically related to monster taming, but the Steam Deck was revealed, which will give a lot of monster taming fans an alternative to buying a PC in order to play some of the PC exclusive titles. The Steam Deck is a Switch competitor, but also a handheld computer, allowing you to install an operating system such as Linux or Windows, and through doing that, in theory, you could download ROMs and other non-Steam games on it as well. Definitely noteworthy for you monster taming fans. This week we got a brand new Shin Megami Tensei 5 story trailer and damn, the game's looking pretty dope. Basically Tokyo has been turned into the underworld where demons run rampant and you're tasked with the job of fighting for humanity after becoming basically a demon-human hybrid. It's up to you to stop the demons from eating everybody's soul and potentially restore some semblance of peace to a world where demons and gods are sort of worn it up, so good luck. Alright, so just before we jump into the top Mon Month submissions for this week, we do have some rapid fire news to get through which include a new Temtem update, some new cassette beasts, and more. So first up we got those cassette beasts, the first is Nevermort, a poison typed bird whom are feared for their disease spreading diving bomb technique, and the second is Alseer, a metal type perhaps thought to be from another world. Even more great designs to add to the roster. The Shin Megami Tensei Persona 25th Anniversary website has launched and teased seven new projects which are in the works. Not a lot of info on as to what exactly these games are or will be, but interesting nonetheless. We got a new patch this week for Temtem that followed last week's tournament patch. This patch includes tankier mythical bosses, tweak to the piano in-game, and other minor changes. Essentially, this is a maintenance patch. The Koromon update is still in the work, but should be coming this week. I'll let you guys know. The latest Demon Lock devlog went live on Heartbeast's channel and goes over some of the new mechanics implemented into the game, including the option of various starters at the beginning, some other visual stuff like hiding and layering UI, and more. The video also goes over how you as a dev could structure your design process, so that might be especially interesting for monster taming developers as well. Here we get to see some more Sentius for Sky Climbers, a showcase of the monster sorting feature for the upcoming Monster Sanctuary update, eating in Ova Magica will net the player a recipe that they can use to create that item, we got a new Mython named Imita for Mython Island, some brand new Zokai for Zokai Zoological Yokai, the latest Ento Drive update was released and features 8 new monsters alongside some more NPCs and other tweaks. A pretty epic ultimate draw animation for Final Stardust. 
We get confirmation that Nexomon 1 on consoles will be a direct port for the most part from the Steam version. However, there were previously missable Nexomon that will be fixed so that they can be obtained in the post game. We got a new slow-mo functionality for Gremlins, which allows you to activate on cooldown, making the almost MOBA-esque combat less mentally taxing. And we got a concept art for Trollum, looking quite nice. We get to see the mining mechanic in Guild of Dragons. The latest series of Malice and Greed updates brought forth over 20 new tutorials, the Immortals function which lets you continue runs after defeat, and the ability to flee from battle by sacrificing a unit, and a lot more. For a full list of implementations, check out the Malice and Greed Steam page. Before we jump into the Mon Month submissions, I did just want to say thanks to everybody who has been making submissions. Choosing which ones to feature has been really difficult because there are so many people telling their awesome stories and showcasing their art. But unfortunately, Monster Tamer News would be like 40 minutes long if I were to include everyone from Twitter and Discord. So we're going to grab a handful this week as well. So we are going to showcase all of the art in the Discord server this time around. So first we'll start up with Cran Time submissions. So first up we got this alligator from Flint the Time Detective. Then we have Esp from Jade Cocoon. This Palmy Beast from Bomberman Max. This Neopet over here. Yeah, that's right. Neopets is in this. We should do a Neopets video. That'd be pretty dope. See where the site's at nowadays in comparison to what it was before. We got this frog from Yu-Gi-Oh! Drasil from Beyblade. I remember that was, uh, I believe, Max's Bit Beast. And Gadjul from Little Monsters. Dr. Colio got us here with the Blue Mirsa, I think it's pronounced, from Neopets. He mentions that it's from a McDonald's toy that he remembers it from. And a little late to the party is Gableye, who shows off their Black Frost from Shin Megami Tensei. Our first nostalgic trip starts with Burb. Have fond memories playing Neopets in my younger days. When my parents dropped me off the library in hopes I read books, I made a beeline for the computers and played all the Flash games on Neopets. Mirsa Chase was my favorite. I love the variety of Neopet species and paintbrushes, morphing potions to turn them into drastically different colors. Being able to customize their page also made them feel really personal and unique. The variety of pet pets and pet pet pets is also really impressive. I recently started playing it again after for nostalgia and have been training my main Neopet in the Battle Dome. It's level 246 now. I'm guessing that's impressive. And we also got this one from HG22. Me and my cousins used to play with Beyblades all the time, anywhere we could find downstairs at my grandma's. I remember one time me and my cousins let it rip, his exploded and came apart, and the metal weight flew straight into his face pretty hard. Hilarious for anybody but him. Besides that, playing the GameCube's Beyblade V-Force was amazing. I played it since 2003, and it holds up pretty well. Now I got my own Beyblade story. So we used to think that you could train your Beyblade like in the show to get it better. So we used to like let it rip in sand and stuff like that. And we thought like it would somehow train the Beyblades. And before anybody says Beyblades not monster taming, the anime kind of is because there's monsters inside the Beyblades. I don't want to get into a whole philosophical debate about that, but pretty funny story nonetheless. And there you have it guys, yet another amazing week in the monster taming genre. I'm honestly so happy to see this genre growing in popularity, especially over the last couple years. So here's to we the community and I hope you all have a fantastic day. If you are a fan of monster taming in general and are not a subscriber, I do highly recommend subscribing to the channel as we do cover monster taming as our chief focus. If you want more in-depth coverage on games within the genre, this is definitely the place to be. So who knows, maybe I'll show you some new games you haven't heard of before. Anyways, with that, I'll see you next time. Peace.